uh, it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Walid Al Habashi. Um, Dr. Walid is an anesthetic and ICU consultant currently working in Dorst County Hospital, NHS. Uh, Dr. Olid has a, a, a lots of uh, medical degrees, including master's degree, MD, um, European Diploma of Intensive Care, European Diploma of Anesthesia and Intensive Care. He's also uh, the founder and director of the Life Saving Academy. Um, Dr. Olid also is a director of multiple uh, critical care ultrasound and uh, echo courses. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, He's going to talk to us today about the art of communication. Dr. Walid, please, the floor is yours. You can start now. Uh, thanks very much uh, for uh, the nice introduction. It's my honor and pleasure to be part of such a great event. Uh, I would like to, first of all, thank Allah uh, and everyone helped this event to happen. And thanks for all our attendees and scientific board. This talk is teaching by modeling, so I, uh, I'm talking for the coming 25 to 30 minutes about communication skills or the art of communication, uh, which I like to present and role model because I sent uh, my thoughts and ideas about communication to most of the panelists in this conference and uh, senior uh, colleagues working in the UK and I asked them uh, if you reflect on these ideas may we add or omit any of these uh, thoughts what you agree with what you don't agree with and I got some reflections and feedback so this uh, group of slides is actually a communication between uh, different colleagues so thanks for everyone reflected on my ideas and this is a product of communication between the Egyptian doctors in UK. Uh, so uh, let me start with one of the most famous authors and one of my beloved speakers, Simon uh, Oliver Sinek. Simon Sinek, he wrote his first book as uh, Start With The Why. So why makes all the changes in our life. He says, in order to be distinguished between all your competitors or all your mates, you should believe in the big value of what you do, the value of what you do. So it's it's a very famous uh, YouTube uh, talk. He presented that on TED Talks. So it's one of the most uh, seen videos uh, for Simon Sinek. You can just put his name and you will find Simon Sinek. It's a fantastic lecture. I really recommend to watch it. So everything is about the why, not the how you do the things or what you do in your things. Okay, so I brought this photo uh, from uh, Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. Uh, it's a famous landmark and it's a symbol in uh, Berlin uh, and German division during the Cold War. It is now the national symbol of peace and unity. So I brought that as an example of the different pillars. Uh, so everything has foundations or pillars in the whole world, like Islam, five pillars of Islam. Uh, every religion has its own pillars or foundations. So I brought this to say there are five, uh, sorry, four main pillars or domains of being a physician or working as physician in the British system. So you are evaluated uh, with these four pillars and you are assessed in all interviews in these four pillar, pillars and you get your appraisal depending on these four pillars and the four pillars number one or the first domain is your knowledge skills and performance number two is the safety and quality of care you are producing and the third pillar or domain is the communication and teamwork so that's why it is important to know the value of communication skills and the fourth domain or pillar is how you maintain the trust. So uh, the process of exchanging information through communication is not always feasible or easy or straightforward. The information, if inaccurate or misleading, or you had some mistakes, it can be catastrophic or re really lead to result, lead to uh, poor care of the patients. 
if this happens you will be investigated and then will come why you did this how you did that where was the miscommunication none of us wants to communicate wrong so you need to know the proper techniques of communication communication is not only telling people your ideas communication is how you influence others or how you influence other people it's about leadership words have power i would say that words are just like a statue this statue has no spirit until you believe yourself in what you say and then you transmit your belief to these words sorry to your audience so you will transmit what you believe in to the audience and at this stage only your status will move as if it has a spirit so your belief is the spirit of your words so if you don't believe what you say please don't say it we always think that communication is between verbal or written words while actually communication non-verbally with sounds or body language is coming earlier in our life and even before the verbal and written that's why we all need to get crystal clear image only we can get a crystal clear image only when we see others talk so if i switch off my camera and you listen to me it is less impressive than watching me so you need to see to understand recognizing unspoken words or unspoken messages always help you to ask good questions and develop supportive relationships if i have a patient old age coming to you inside the clinic and you didn't establish a good rapport because you overlooked his using hearing aids because of his age you may lose the whole chat or the whole visit be smart or be vigilant this is what i call social intelligence when we meet patients for the first time in an anesthesia room for example we establish rapport or rapport before sticking an iv cannula in his hand you need to engage with him it's not about putting the cannula in it's about the trust it's about you have to tell him convince him assure him that he is in safe hands it's not about doing the job it's about why you doing your job and how you doing the best quality of your job and that's all before he trusts you and then you put him asleep how to do that practically if a patient is coming to my clinic or to the anesthesia room i need to pick something that he is interested in if he's a young man what do you do for a living like what's your job if it's a child what's your best doll or what's your best uh, cartoon movie or something to distract him and engage with him more this is the art of communication this is how we communicate with people in order to make your written words feel like touch or feel like watching it needs a great effort and a great a great training when i started six years back in ireland i approached people in hr or nurses or anyone and saying hi good morning i need to do so and so hi good morning or good evening good afternoon can you do me this favor straight away like that and i was surprised that is actually a shocking experience they get surprised they get like shocked i don't know them they don't know me and they are facing them for the first time and then saying okay can you do that for me i learned in ireland that this is not the best approach the best approach is let them ask you how they can help how you do that Good morning, how are you? How are you keeping? Is it all good? It looks like a nice weather. Give an intro in like 30 seconds or a minute and then give yourself a pause and then they will ask you. Yeah, it looks like good weather or this and that. They will just engage with you in the conversation 
and then yeah tell me how can i help you with a big smile so it actually changed my life if you come initially and say look good morning big i need this or i need that rushing you're putting people under pressure they may hesitate to help you but with the second approach when you facilitate your talk with this intro in a minute or 30 seconds it's hard for them to say no after that they, you know the lingo you know how to speak to people it's not only what you say it's when you say it how you say it and where you say it a very good example for that is breaking bad news should i break the bad news over the phone or call the family in and even when i call the family in should i tell them in the corridor or allow them to sit and close the door for more privacy should i close the door and immediately tell them this bad news or make sure they are sitting so then they don't faint or get a collapse afterwards how to say that introduce yourself allow some time to express feeling listen to them don't rush this moment imagine yourself in their shoes don't rush this communities or these areas of the world they don't rush things most of the time they are concerned with the quality they don't have our 105 or 107 million people and everything is rushing just just to finish as much as we can it's all about the quality of care and then please every now and then make sure you check that what you said is perceived and understood and if they have any questions before you transmit to the next step. Communication is not about what you say, it's how you say it. Listen before you talk. And actually listening is not just one grade, it's different grades. You may listen waiting for the pause to talk, or you may be listening waiting your turn to talk. I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't like that person listening to me, just waiting for me to finish what I said without actually listening, just for commenting about his thoughts. What's better is reflective listening. I am listening carefully, thinking about what you say, learning for myself, and if I have something to add, or a question to ask, I am doing that. Otherwise, I keep quiet. This is the art of reflective listening. And what's actually better is the fourth level or the highest and the best level, the empathetic listening. It goes without saying that don't leave to your phone reaching your WhatsApp message or your email at the middle of this discussion. So empathetic means you are fully attentive. I am all ears listening to what you say, trying to think how I can help you in what you're asking, not just washing my hands in a quick message reflects that I wasn't actually listening. Don't listen to respond, listen to learn particularly in your first few months or years in the country, please learn to bite your tongue. All beginners in the country, in Europe or in different countries, when they go overseas, you left your comfort zone to a new area. And at this stage, you need to show yourself. You are under pressure to show, I have this experience, please, listen to me you have this pressure honestly they will listen to you but not when you talk when you do so you have to see them watch them and really focus on what they say and what they do and then you will be able to reflect with your background history and training given the techniques or the principles they use and then you will be start. You should believe in what you say, 
you should be confident about what you say otherwise you need to listen to learn this is two images here showing you this speaker versus that speaker open gesture she's eye to eye contact she is talking and these people are clapping hands for her because she looks like a pioneer compare that to this man that is stressed he may not be very happy with his talk he may be didn't enough time or didn't have enough time to rehearse his talk so he's not that confident about what he say two different images may reflect a big of our realities plan your talk before you talk plan before you speak regardless it's a phone call or it's a written speech or it's an email just think what you want to deliver in this message and do all the effort in thinking before writing emotional again or social intelligence contains a lot of facial expressions gesture eye to eye contact this is all non verbal communication remember there are unacceptable behaviors what not to do while someone is speaking to you and then you point with fingers please don't do that please don't do that that's really shameful they consider that as if you hit him do not interrupt him while talking please again do not interrupt try to bite your tongue as much as he talks keep quiet keep quiet keep quiet listen and when he pauses you can start to reflect try to organize your thoughts try to speak the last one of these non verbal communications that's really you shouldn't do if you are stepping out of any door and the door closes after you look behind you if there is anyone coming please hold the door for him believe me these simple things makes a lot of difference adil ray he is hugely popular speaker there are 1.9 million viewers of his program lingo that's an australia sorry an american program that is very famous he is putting some words or the putting the first letter of the word and his attendees of the program starts to guess the word until they get the right word so it's all about the lingo lingo is the language of the community you are living in this reminds me with dr walid ali in one of his lectures uh, in the beginning of saving lives academy and the anesthesia and critical care refresher course he was asking his seniors in australia he's in australia since 20 years now he was asking when should i sit the australian fellowship exam i am clinically ready for it the answer when you understand the lingo what common people are talking about in the country here then you guarantee you pass so what is the lingo i went to ireland and someone in front of me said in one occasion hold on a sec i'm sorry i i didn't catch what you said what did you say he said hold on a sec and what does that mean hold on a sec means hold on one second if you don't ask what does this mean i would never know what is the crack how is the crack it's how are you or how it is going what do you do for a living is what what is your job this is what we call the lingo there is loads and loads of these examples so try when you arrive to the community to ask if you don't know i trust no one can give me what is the word written here this is what we call jargon words please refrain from saying jargon words and the most common jargon word in our life as egyptians is yani i heard it from an indian examiner before 
he asked me, what is the word Yani? And I said, I, I don't understand, what's that? He said, a lot of people coming to the exam of the FRCR radiology, and in the middle of the sentence says, Yani, 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 and it's very multiple times, which keeps me confused. So what is Yani? I said, Yani means, it means. So please avoid the jargon words because no one will understand what you're talking about and then you will look weird. So don't presume in your life anything. Always ask. So if you don't know what's the meaning, ask. If you're confused, ask. Never presume. If you presume and don't ask, that's your fault. Train yourself. Transparency or the duty of Kandur is one of the big slogans or big well-known uh, points of discussion in the British system or the advanced world. What's the duty of Kandur? You should be honest and transparent with anything and everything happens to the patient. You need, you are obliged if you have any mistake happen during the patient care or the course of patient management to tell the patient or his family about what happened exactly so at this stage and i don't wish you or me to be in that situation it's again not about you tell the patient it's not just telling him you have to give him the details your task is actually as a foreigner, extremely difficult, more difficult to those people who have the lingo. As you may not have the lingo, initially, don't go through these discussions yourself. Call for help, ask for someone senior, watch him, listen to him, how he did this discussion, how he led this conversation, how he absorbed the patient anger, it's art, and then, you can fake it until you make it. Try to mimic what he did and it comes with time. I want you to make sure that you know, I want you to make sure that you're all aware that you're coming to a community that reads a lot. They are very knowledgeable. They read in all the waiting times and believe me, when you come to the UK, you will know that waiting times are very long times. So they make use of that time. Now, communication could be via the phone. Again, plan your call before dialing the number. Train yourself in doing that. Train and train and train. SBAR is a good uh, mnemonic to remind you what should I say over the phone. Situation, background, assessment and recommendation. So my name is Walid Al-Habashi. I am an anesthesia consultant. I am calling from operating theater. I have a patient who is 25 year old gentleman, came in a road traffic accident, and I want to book him for a CT, chest, abdomen, and pelvis, plus a CT brain. So that's my assessment and recommendation. Or if you are a junior person, my name is Walid. I am the anesthesia resident on call. I am assessing a 20-year-old gentleman in the emergency department. He is presenting with what looks like sepsis or septic shock. I am not sure what is the source of this patient's sepsis, but he's actually deteriorating very quickly. May I ask you to come in? And until you come in, is there anything you want me to do? Very clear message, situation, background, your assessment and your recommendation or your thoughts, what you think. Now, if you run via phone call and we'll you will have that in your first couple of months, a lot with banks, with uh, electricity companies, and it happens not infrequent that you give them your phone, sorry, your email and your uh, name over the phone. And it sounds very professional if you say, my name is Walid, and it spells as Whiskey, Alpha, Lima, India, Delta, and my surname is Ali, Alpha, Lima, Yankee. 
this is I'm not asking you to say water instead of whiskey because whiskey is haram and water is halal this is a phonetic alphabet internationally recognized and as well if you rehearse your email by alphabet so it's whiskey Sierra Hotel 2976 at blah 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 this is how you should train yourself believe me it sounds more professional and it prevents a lot of mistakes and a lot of hassle if they write your email wrong you will not get the email if you write your name wrong you will have to call them again and correct your email because you need a proof of address okay so penicillin was wrongly interpreted as penicillamine allergy over the phone so again watch your words make sure repeat back or read back if you are over the phone make it a habit read back or repeat back what you understood let me repeat again what i understood this is blah 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 and say again and if they have any comment or if you misunderstood they will stop you communication in writing it's very common that we erase our whatsapp messages or our messages on the messenger but you cannot unsend an email so careful when you are writing an email to make it proof reading to make a proof reading review it twice because once it is sent out you cannot delete it you still you actually can with some uh, email accounts within three minutes or something but this is not common always open your email with a short greeting dear mr or sir or madam hope my email finds you well any opening statement before you text whatever you wish and then end with kind regards and then put your affiliation and it's not a bad habit to always leave a disclaimer in your signature and you can make this again something for confidentiality if your email goes to the wrong person you declared or you made this disclaimer if it is for the wrong person he is obliged to destroy or delete that email it's not a bad habit if you are talking on professional emailing there are definitely challenge situations like deaf people blind people kids and empathy with interpreters there's a question at the end of this day about how you interpret or how you sympathize or empathize with patient coming to you via interpreter, which is really challenging. I will answer that question with Dr. Hussam Al-Banna in the last session of the day in the mock interview. Empathy via interpreter is not such easy and there is actually a good research published on January 2018 and it actually says the interpreter's renditions had an impact on the patient's empathetic opportunities and on the doctor's empathetic response in one third of the coded interactions. So they did a video taping and then they recorded that and third was not conducted well in either way. I hope my sound of this video works well if not i can post this one this one uh, link on uh, the attendance in the chat box if the sound doesn't work i really like communication with no words in this video you may be have you may have watched this video before this is what i call the art of communication this doctor is an artist of communication Look at him. He didn't say a word. Are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. 
You see, what is the impression of the family about the quality of care they are getting with this injection? It is simple, but it's all about the quality again. Now, give me an advice, Walid. What should I do to improve my communication skills? I would say in your break time, engage. In your lunch time, engage with colleagues from different nationalities. I'm not saying the British, I'm saying every other nationality. Try not to stick to the Egyptians talking your comfortable language. Try to sit with different accents, different languages, train your ears. This is something you don't face a lot in Egypt. This is how you improve your communication skills. Improve your listening by BBC, learning English, and always find a topic to keep in mind to chat about in your break and lunch time. Read as much as you can. Kindle is a very good choice. iPad, I, sorry, iPad or tablets is an alternative, but Kindle is a very nice one. It's suitable for not advertising anyone, but I find it very helpful. Write and proofread what you write, particularly in the emails. Again, research work is actually the best teacher in writing. So if you did not involve in research, please start to straight away. Now, don't be overwhelmed before you see this video. Again, we had been all there. I was in your shoes. We were all in your shoes. Communication is an evolving process. And we all get better over time. All what you need is to focus. Learn and train yourself. How to properly communicate. It's a learning curve. I would say this is one of the good courses that I did in uh, recently in the British system. It's from the electronic staff record. It's absolutely for free if you are working in the British system. If you're not working in the British system, once you arrive here, make sure you make this course. And I couldn't close my talk without asking you to visit Saving Lives Academy and have a look on the various courses there. Most of my courses in the academy are free. Seldom you will find paid courses. Finally, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Olid, for this uh, nice uh, presentation. Uh, uh, I really learned a lot from it. Thank you. Um, I'm just gonna, uh, just a quick reminder for people who um, have just joined in, uh, just a few housekeeping points. Uh, the certificates will be sent within two days of the conference. Uh, the recorded sessions will be available after two weeks from today on the website and the YouTube channel of the BIMA um, and the Saving Life Academy with open access. Please uh, make sure you put all your questions on the Q&A uh, section to share your questions um, and don't put anything on the um, on the chat box as it's not been monitored. Um, questions uh, we'll answer. We'll try and answer uh, the questions live at the end of each session, um, or um, if not, then the answer will be uh, typed in um, if there is uh, not enough time to answer all the questions. Uh, at the end of the meeting, uh, you will receive an email with the evaluation form. It's a requirement to get your certificate, so please um, finish it um, as honest as um, as soon as uh, you can. Um, thanks for everyone. So uh, we're now coming to the uh, end of the first session. So I would like to invite uh, all the speakers to the floor to have um, to answer a few of the questions we have got. Um,